chilly out there looking toward the Bay Bridge, but we're getting ready for a warm up in the Bay Area. Nothing like the record setting conditions, though, in Texas. Highs there have been hitting well above 100 degrees for days. And the National Weather Service says heat indices in some areas could reach 115. Uh, nothing like what we're expecting, but why are they getting what they're getting out there? Here's Darren Pat. A little bit of an explanation on why they're experiencing such extreme weather in Texas right now. And when it comes to heat waves, heat waves are the easiest thing to put a fingerprint on from climate change. And there's a whole branch of science now that tries its best to do that. Attribution science. How much of this can we attribute to climate change specifically? If you look at the map, you see the areas in deep red on here? Look at the date. This was put together actually for today's date looking across the country. And this is a way to visualize where places that are going off the charts on temperatures for heat, that heat being registered today in Texas is five times more likely under the current global warming, under the current concentrations of carbon dioxide than it would have been prior to the amount of carbon dioxide that we put into the atmosphere. There's another way to think about this. Why are we seeing more of the extremes than we used to? If you took all the temperatures in general that the atmosphere would have had before we started to experience human-induced climate change, put a line down the middle for average, this is what the range of average temperatures was like before global warming. Where you start to get towards the middle of this bell curve here, this is where the most common numbers are gonna be, the closest that are within the, the uh, closest range to what you would consider average. When you get out toward the edges over here, those are the extremes. We've warmed the climate in general by about a degree. Doesn't sound like a lot. But if you shift the average now just a little bit, over one degree, you have to take the whole bell curve now and shift it. So down over here, this bottom limb, which had been getting into extreme conditions, would get there some of the time. But now that we've shifted everything over, if we pull that whole thing over by one degree, you're now much more likely on a higher occurrence level to get into the extreme situation with heat waves, which is why Texas has been shattering records for such a continual stretch of days. And if you look at the picture uh, as a whole for the country, look what we're doing. The map shaded here in deep red shows you Texas reaching for, for this point in June, the highest temperatures there on record. Look what we're going through. For the last seven days, that's no surprise. So there is a balance here. When one side of the country is doing an extreme, the other side's doing the other. But it hasn't just been the last seven days for us. I'm going to switch this now to the last two months, the last 60 days. Look at coastal California. There is still a very obvious strip of blue there. For the last 60 days, we have been consistently below average. And in about four days, that's going to change. So we looked at this in detail in the first half hour of this newscast, the warm-up coming our way for Friday is really the headline for us. We're not going to be breaking records. We're only going to be like five to seven degrees above average. But when we do that, those numbers for the inland valleys will be getting into the mid-80s, like the bars in front of me just tried to show you. I'll show you another way of visualizing that. There's tomorrow. Warm-up hasn't started yet. I'm going to take those numbers, and I'm going to switch them to Friday. And now you see all the deep shades of red show up here. By Friday, from the low 70s tomorrow to the mid 90s for daytime highs over here. And in the seven day forecast, we'll get all the microclimates in because for San Francisco and Oakland, this is a subtle warm up. You'll be in the mid to upper 70s by the time we get there in Oakland on Saturday. If we pull out the North Bay and South Bay valleys, these temperatures have made it up to 90 by the time we get to Friday and Saturday. We'll be near 90 in San Jose. And when we take a look at the Inland East Bay, you're going to go to 92 by the time we get to Saturday. 85 would be average. It's only seven degrees above average. But the point we're stressing on this is, as we saw, we've been below average for so long. We haven't really acclimated to this yet. So start thinking ahead now to going easy on yourself outside with this little spike in heat.